Okay, so hi everyone. So in this lecture video, we will study radioactivity. Radioactive decay is the process by which an atom rearranges its constituent nucleons, protons, and neutrons to end up with a lower inherent energy, by which an atomic nucleus is said to be unstable, thus it loses energy by radiation. A material containing unstable nuclei is said to be radioactive. Let's start by defining first radioactive decay followed by the discussion of lineup stability for the table of nucleides. Last is the discussion of radioactive decay law. Radioactive decay happens spontaneously, and energy is released in the process. The result of this process is called the daughter atom, or sometimes we call this one the progeny atom, with less inherent energy than the preceded atom, the parent. So from the parent, this will decay to its progeny atom, the change in energy is related to the binding energy of the nucleus. The daughter or the progeny atom has a higher binding energy per nucleon than the parent atom. So that's why binding energy per nucleon is important in radioactivity. And it can release the, the energy with your particulate radiation such as alpha particle or beta particle or with a photon, such as your gamma ray. Let us now go to the discussion of the line of stability. In general, the total number of nucleons and the ratio of your neutrons to protons determine whether the nucleide is stable or if it is radioactive. A graph of the number of neutrons as a function of the number of protons, or Z, for each unique stable nucleide produces a curve that follows a certain line. So first, uh, we have this line wherein the number of neutrons is equal to the number of your protons. At low to intermediate atomic number, wherein the nucleus has the same number of protons as neutrons, it follows this straight line here. And then it diverges up so that for stable nucleides at higher atomic number, there are more neutrons than protons. This line of stability depicts the data from all stable nucleides. And this is your line of stability here. This is a characterization of the stability of nucleides to radioactivity based on their binding energy. Most stable nucleides have roughly equal number of protons and neutrons. So the line for which Z is equal to N forms the rough initial line in defining the stable nucleides. But this is only true for low to intermediate Z. The greater the number of protons, the more neutrons are required to stabilize a nucleide. However, nucleides with larger values of Z, larger values of your protons, requires an even larger number of neutrons. So that's N is greater than Z to become stable. In discussing the line of stability, and we also call your line of stability as the value of stability. I think this is a better term because this is not really a line. Uh, we always talk about the neutron-proton ratio. This is just the ratio of its number of neutrons to its number of protons. Among stable nuclei and naturally occurring nuclei, this ratio generally increases with increasing number of your atomic number or, or, or your number of protons. This is because electrical repulsive forces between protons uh, scale with distance differently than strong nuclear force attraction. Let's now check the sides of our value of stability. This ratio is small somewhere here on the right side of the value of stability and this corresponds to 
an excess of protons over neutrons in nucleides, these nucleides tend to be unstable to beta plus decay or electron capture. Since such decay converts protons to a neutron. On the other side of the value of stability, somewhere here at the left side, the ratio is large that corresponds to an excess of neutrons over protons. And these nucleides tend to be unstable to beta minus decay. Beta minus decay. Since such decay converts neutrons to protons. Let's start by defining radioactivity. It refers mainly to how many radioactive atoms are undergoing radioactive decay per second. Also, it does not reflect the type and the energy of radiation. The common unit for radioactivity is Curie, with the symbol CI, or this abbreviation, and 1 Curie is equal to 3.7 times 10 to the 10 disintegration per second, or Becquerel. This, uh, a disintegration refers to an atom undergoing radioactive decay, and the SI unit for radioactivity is your Becquerel. abbreviated by this, BQ. 1 Becquerel, therefore, is equal to 1 disintegration per second. Clearly, this shows this equation. And radioactivity in the range of millicurie, MCI, and mega Becquerel is common in nuclear medicine. Radioactive decay law states that the loss of atoms in a radioactive source per unit time, which refers to this first derivative here, negative because this is a loss, and this is proportional to the number of radioactive atoms n, with the constant of proportionality lambda. This lambda is called your decay constant. Oops, this is your decay constant. And this refers to the probability that a given nucleus will decay per unit time. For certain species, this lambda or decay constant is said to be first. This is the same for all nuclei. Second, this is constant, which means that this is independent of the number of nuclei present. Third, this is independent of the age. Oops independent of the age of the nucleus. Using this differential equation, we can derive a general form of the number of at radioactive atoms as a function of time by multiplying both sides by dt. Then by separating the variables, we can have this form. The antiderivative of this is your natural logarithm. And this one is just t plus a, a certain general constant c. Then we will have this expression. You can get C if your n naught serves as the initial number of nuclei, and therefore n is equal to n naught when your time t is equal to zero. So we'll just substitute zero here, and you can get your constant C as the natural logarithm of your n naught or the initial number of nuclei. Substitute this one for C, and therefore we'll have this form. Put this one on top of your E. Then we will get this final form. The radioactivity A of a source is generally defined as the number of atoms disintegrating per unit time. Thus, we can express this negative dn over dt as your A, which is your activity, and therefore we'll have this form. A t, your activity as a function of time, is equal to the initial activity A naught times this exponential decay uh, E to the negative lambda, your decay constant T. We note that an exponential curve never goes to zero, so some radioactivity always remains. The half-life, as shown here, is just the time it takes 
for the radioactivity or the number of radioactive atoms to decrease by a factor of 2. So therefore, we can get the half-life T by defining this ratio, the final or the activity at T1 half over A0, the initial activity, which is equal to 1 half, which is equal to this uh, exponential decay form. Then by solving this one, solving for T, we can get the expression for your half-life, which is equal to ln2 or 0.693 over lambda, which is your decay constant. Let's now talk about average lifetime in radioactivity. The average lifetime is actually just the reciprocal of the decay constant lambda. So therefore, average lifetime is equal to 1 over lambda, or sometimes we write this one as a constant tau. And this is due to the fact that the atoms or the nucleus of a certain parent, so let's say we have a parent here, and your parent uh, consists of different atoms or different nuclei, and each of these uh, nuclei or atoms have different time before they turn into the daughter. And that time, the average of that time, is the average lifetime. The time interval may be thought of as the sum of the lifetimes of all individual unstable nuclei in a sample, which is for this case the parent sample, divided by the total number of unstable nuclei present. Specific activity is frequently used in radioactivity and it is the activity per quantity of a radionuclide. Uh, it is a physical quantity of that specific region nucleide. For solids, we can define your specific activity as the activity over mass, or the, the unit is becquerel per kilogram, or curie per gram. For gases or liquids, the specific activity is just the activity per volume, and the unit is becquerel per cubic meter or curie per cubic centimeter.